Hello, it's Mr. Robs here, and today we're going to talk about transition diagrams and their matrices and trans transition matrices. Okay, and so when we're dealing with this, if we can see that many probability events are independent. So like if you flip a coin or if the heads or tails each flip is independent of the other, or people's hand in is left or right and their ability to identify musical tones, like is there any independence people are left handed do it better? The answer is no. There's been tests done to do that. So many, many events, things are independent. But there's lots and lots of events where probabilities are not independent, such as so socioeconomic background and whether you have a college degree. There's a big relationship between those two. The probability of remaining with your cell phone carrier when you're contracted up for renewal. That also, uh, if you chances are you're going to stick with your carrier as opposed to change. And so each time your contract comes up, really the probability of changing is very low because it depends upon your carrier. And so we're going to study these types of scenarios where the probability of an event happens is dependent upon the previous event. And this whole process is what are called Markov chains. So looking at this example, Mr. Robs each morning has either a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. He's got to have some caffeine. If today he had coffee, which was true today, then the probability he has tea the next day is 0 0.2. However, if he had tea today, then the probability of him having tea the following day is 0 0.4. So if this is my situation, let's consider probability trees. Okay, so there's two different events. If I have tea to start my day, if I had tea today, the probability of me having tea is 0 0.4. If I have coffee, well, then if I don't have tea, it's going to be coffee. So it's one or the other. Similarly, if I had coffee today, then the probability of tea is 0 0.2. Well, that means this has to be 0 0.8. And so this is probably tree diagrams which you're comfortable with, you've seen in the past. But I'm going to take the same information. I'm going to make what's called a transition diagram. So I'm going to start with coffee. Here's my coffee. And I also have tea. Now, from my coffee, if I had coffee today, the probability of having tea, if I go from coffee to change over to tea, that probability, notice there's an arrow on the end, is 0 0.2. But if I have coffee and I return back to coffee, that's going to be 0 0.8. But if I had tea today, then the probability of having tea the following day, then I couldn't go back to tea is going to be 0 0.4. And so the probability of going back to coffee is 0 0.6. And this diagram here with the arrows indicating the direction is called a transition diagram. OK? So I now want to make a transition matrix. We're going to call it T. And so the transmission transition matrix deals with the current state. This is the current state of my coffee and my tea. And this is going to be my future state, my future state of coffee and tea. I have my matrix. If I start at coffee, my probability of returning to coffee is 0 0.8. And if I have coffee and I return to tea, that's 0 0.2. And one thing you want to recognize is that each column in a transition matrix has a sum of 1. So the probabilities have to add up to 1. Similar to a branch of the probability tree, they have to add up to 1. If I do the T scenario, T goes to coffee, 0 0.6. And T stays T, 0 0.4. And so this is the transition matrix. This one's T. And this is the transition diagram. Just a different way to represent probability information. Okay, so here's the same information. I've tied up a little, a little bit. And so now let us assume Mr. Ops had coffee today. Okay, fill in the tree diagram. Well, if I had coffee today, my probability of having coffee tomorrow is 0 0.8 and t is 0 0.2. So this is tomorrow. The next day, well, if I had coffee, then it's a 0 0.8 and a 0 0.2. 
If I had t though, then I use this probability. This is 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. If I come along now, I'm going to assume that my coffee today, having coffee today, find the probability that I'll have coffee two days from now. Well, if I'm going to have coffee two days from now, I have to recognize that I want to end up in this part of the branch and in this part of the branch. And so to calculate that, I'm going to go 0 0.8, 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. That's a coffee and a coffee. And I'm going to do a, a tea and a coffee. So 0 0.6 and 0. Oh, 0.2 times 0 0.6. Well, when I calculate this, and I've already done it, it's going to be 0 0.76. If you're not, don't trust me, go ahead and try it out yourself. So that's getting having coffee. If I have coffee today, determine probably I will have tea two days from now. Well, if I'm going to do tea, well, if I consider the tea scenarios, that's going to be tea, tea. So I know to get t, it's going to be 0 0.8 times 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. And when I multiply that and add them together, I get 0 0.24. I could have also just subtracted from this value because these probabilities all have to add up to 1 but this is going through the process. Okay, this is what we've done in the past. Nothing too challenging or hard for that. But I also next want to go and consider if I would calculate t squared. Okay, so if I go to my calculator, I've already taken the liberty to add into matrix A is my transition matrix. So now I want to go and do A squared. And this is my value here. Okay, so this is my A square matrix. What do I notice compared to this? If we recall, this is going to have coffee in two days time, assuming that I start off with coffee and I end up with coffee. This one here, I started with coffee and I ended up with tea in two days time. And so if I look at this matrix here, I knew this was current state, this was future state. And so if you can see, this means this is the probability here of starting at coffee and two days later having coffee starting with coffee and having tea. And so this T squared matrix is another way of finding multiple days of probability when it depends upon the previous information. So if I want to read T squared, if Mr. Ops had tea today, what's the probability he will have tea two days from now? Well, so probably I'm going to have two days from now. I've had tea today. Probably going to have tea two days from now is 0 0.28. The term probably that three days from now, Mr. Ops will have coffee, assume he had T today. Well, to do that, I'm going to do T3. And another thing I can do is I can multiply it by 0, 1, because this will assume that I had T today. I did not have coffee, I had T. And so when I do that, if I take this matrix, and multiply it by matrix B, which I made to be T1, you'll see I end up with these values here. And so when I do that, I get 0 0.744 and 0 0.256. And so this is, I started out with coffee, 
and this is getting coffee, and this is getting tea. And so the probability, oh, sorry, I read that backwards. Assuming he had tea today, I start off with tea, and I want to find out that I have coffee. So I start out with tea, I'm going to have coffee, and so the probability of that happening is 0 0.744 is the probability that I had tea today, and three days from now I will have coffee. This is the probability by t cubed. If I would have just done t cubed, I could have gotten the information as well. If I would have just went here, and I can delete the b, and you can also see if I read it carefully, it's going to be this second column that tells me the information. So this is your introduction to Markov chains when we do a system of multiple multiplications of matrices to demonstrate probabilities of certain events happening when they're conditional upon something else happening.